Good morning or good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this year 10. I hope you're having a lovely week and you're thrilled at yet another lovely, exciting tutorial. You're going to be so lucky this week because you've got two. Two for the price of one, guys. It's like a bog off. Okay, so this is our first whole class marking. As you know, um, for the COVID letters, I marked them individually and sent them back. Uh, this time I've had a look at everything. I've pulled some really good examples that people have done out. They'll be on the next slide. And then I'm going to talk you through some of the common errors, some of the things that were cropping up, not just in one person's, but in multiple people's. Um, before we move on, there are a couple of things I want to say. Really, really well done to the work, the effort, um, the commitment, the focus. To all of those watching the YouTube videos, uh, doing the work and getting the work handed in to me. Uh, I think a few of you are falling a little bit behind and that's fine. I understand that. It's no, um, the expectation is that we know there are going to be problems, okay? Where you can keep on top of it makes my life easier, makes your life easier. But if you're, you know, a few days out on handing it in, that's okay, which is why I'm kind of delaying when I mark them to give that extra leeway. On the downside, I am a little disappointed at how few I'm getting, okay? There's a lot of you in this class, and I'm not getting a whole lot of work handed in. Um, so I don't mind if it's late, I don't mind if you're behind. Don't feel, like because you got yourself behind, it's too much to get um, done. Just get one piece done at a time and send me that in, okay? I don't even mind if you aren't one of the people that already did the COVID letter from weeks ago. If you've only just got around to doing that, send me it, okay? And then eventually I can get it marked and get it back to you. Um, don't just think because you've fallen behind you're not going to do anything because it really is important that you keep practising these skills because obviously this time next year, you know, all life being pretty much back to normal, fingers crossed, you will be in that exam room. Um, so please, please do keep working through the tutorials and do get the work sent in to me. Okay, you can upload on our Teams group or you can email it to me. Okay, uh, now to the lovely slide of all the different things people did well. So, what went well? First off, Natasha. Using, uh, Natasha is using accurate terminology, brilliant, in each paragraph, which is key. Some people used one or two terms, but they only used it in one paragraph, or they used it in two, but not all three. Make sure you're using that continuously because that's one of the differences. Is there a um, sum? Is there an attempt? Is it consistent? Is it concise? All of those different things are what the examiner is looking for. And if you only use it in one paragraph, you're not going to move up that mark scheme with it. Um, and each paragraph is addressing the impact on the reader because don't forget that statement's in two parts. Okay, how is the writer structured the text to interest the reader? So you have to relate it back to the impact that those structural choices and decisions have on the reader. Um, the quote that I've taken as the example of this is she says, this leaves the reader feeling anxious about the mother and sorry for the family. Really nice, clear, concise impacts on the reader. And it had linked in very well to the inferences and analysis she'd made before. Okay, so really nice work there, Natasha. You do need to slightly... Um, develop the clarity of your analysis in places, I would say, though. Uh, Louisa, uh, repeatedly addresses and links to possible effects on the reader. These need to be linked more clearly and closely to structural choice you have identified and explored. So you're linking it to the effects brilliantly, but what you then need to do is make sure that you're linking those effects to the structural choice the writers make. Why has having dialogue at this point changed our view or widened our view or made us realise something or see a different aspect of Alex? Okay, Think about just relating it back to that structural choice because remember, this isn't a question about language, it's a question about structure. But some really, really good linking to those effects throughout the reader. Uh, and then Isabel, uh, the quote I've taken is, the, uh, it's a longer one on this one. Uh, the introduction of Alex's father brings some calm to the situation when he states that Mama is going to get better. However, this is later juxtaposed by the idea of nothing in the refrigerator but orange juice, milk and ice cream. 
This contrast is effective because it makes the dad seem as though he is struggling to raise the children by himself and the mother seems a far but sorry, the mother seems far better in comparison. But she is the one who is ill. Lovely. So this is a really clear and insightful piece of analysis. Well done. This could be developed still though by exploring the structural choice to have this in the middle of the text or to have presented one through dialogue and the other piece of information through narration. Why choose these two methods? What impact does this have? Develop your effects on the reader so that your analysis is deeper and more sophisticated. So it's a really, really lovely piece of analysis, well thought through, nice, clear and concise, insightful. But if we could just link and develop um, our um, clarity in linking that effect to those structural choices, that would have gone up on the mark scheme, okay? Uh, and then Harvey, I really like this end point that he made. Um, because the list is so long, it shows that he doesn't just miss her a little bit, he misses her a lot, okay? So it's a really nice, clear inference linked to sentence structure. Sentence structure is an element of structure that you can explore during this. Um, so really nice spot there, and I think that was a really lovely inference, Harvey. But then what you need to do to develop that is explore why that point's been there structurally at that place within the extract, i.e. why have that list right at the end? How does that build on everything we've had before? Would that have been more or less effective if he'd, if the writer had opened with that list? Okay, so take one element of the structure that you've analysed and develop it, build on it, because that's how you're going to work up the mark scheme. But really, really nice work, guys. Now, on to your EBIs. So, um, as you can see, some are in black, some are in red. Uh, the ones in red are the ones that uh, were the most common. Okay, so these were the most reoccurring uh, errors. Um, and some of them I'm going to talk through in detail, some I'll just read out to you. So explore the tone and atmosphere at the beginning. Why is this significant? I think that's quite self-explanatory. I don't think you need much information from me for that, okay? The tone at the beginning is obviously quite dark and ominous. We have the nightmare, we have the weather. Why start it like that? Why is that atmosphere um, chosen to open with? How is it significant? Develop your inferences. Do not let them be too simplistic. Some people are making really nice inferences, but they're not really doing anything with them, okay? And you're not doing that on everyone, but you're doing that on some. And again, it's just moments where you're losing easy marks. Uh, and remember you're only reading and analysing an extract from a no novel. Somebody spoke about the fact that it was uh, putting this at the end of the novel. No, it's the end of the extract. Be clear. Uh, details need to be sufficient. Can't speak. Details need to be specific. The writer uses opening and introductions does not mean anything. You're not analysing any clear line, structural choice or moment. Okay. Uh, red key things. So not identify structural changes, not following the instructions to have one key, that means one paragraph on the opening. How has that been? Let me rephrase that. How has the writer chosen to open the extract? Why? What's the impact of that? How does that create interest or engagement or anything like that on the reader? Then, or one paragraph, i.e. your second paragraph, on a structural change somewhere in the middle. Okay. Lots of people were doing paragraph one, then paragraph two. Well, hold on, paragraph two isn't the middle, is it? Okay. If you wanted to tag paragraph two into the end of analysing the opening paragraph, that's fine, but your second paragraph needs to be on something, some on a significant structural change somewhere in the middle. And obviously we do get that. We get that change, one, because we're introduced to other characters, and two, because we shift from narration to dialogue for a section. That's a significant structural change. Uh, and where some people were talking about it, they were talking about the other characters coming in, but they weren't talking about the dialogue. That's a structural change. Um, and then the last paragraph to be on the structure of the ending. How has that ending been structured? Um, is it a development from the opening? Is it a complete contrast to the opening? Uh, 
is there a link to the opening? Is it, you know, has it created a cyclical narrative? So really nice term to use if you can. Uh, and then go back through your work and see if you've used terminology for structure. Lots of people kind of missed easy moments to put structural terminology in there. Uh, you are really addressing and identifying the structural choices or are you just saying beginning, shift and end? Oh, and structural choice was used quite a lot without anyone telling me what the structural choice was. Are you connecting your inferences to the structural choices? Why does the writer introduce this idea, aspect, tone at this point? How does this develop our understanding of the character? And that link pretty much to um, everybody I was talking about on the What You Did Well side about what it is you need to do in order to develop and get extra points on what you're already doing really well. Uh, because inferences, I'm so impressed, they were really up there. And it isn't the simplest of texts. It wasn't the most complicated, but it isn't the simplest. So I was really impressed by that. Uh, you must quote from the source. Some students have not used any quotes in one or all of their paragraphs. You have to evidence the points you're making. Uh, make sure you are linking your inferences to both the structural choice and the impact i.e. effect on the reader, because don't forget there's two aspects to that statement you're answering. What uh, structure choices have the writer made, or sorry, how has the writer structured the text to interest the reader? Uh, never use the phrase make them read on, or makes the reader read on, you know full well you're banned, I tell you this enough. Um, try to make sure points and analysis are on key structure aspects, not language choices. If you're going to explore sentence structure, you use this in combination with this key structural choice. Exactly like I was saying about what Harvey did. He made a really lovely comment on that sentence structure uh, point, but then you need to link that back to the structural choice of why has that been positioned at this point. OK, but very, very good work, those of you doing it and handy. And I'm really, really impressed. Your focus is there. Your dedication is there. The effort is very clear to see uh, in the quality of the work. So well done, everybody that handed something in from our class on that one. Um, I will be filming our tutorial for this week on paper one, question four. It's going to be on the same source, guys. OK, so if you've already printed it, you don't need to reprint a new one for this week. OK, so it's still going to be on the old Alex. Um, and it's going to be question four. Okay, I'm going to, so I'm going to say goodbye for now and have a lovely rest of your morning.